We're going to begin this hour with the start of a new era in Britain this week with the coronation of King Charles III. The monarch, 74 years old, will be crowned on Saturday. Of course, it's a role he's prepared for his entire life. And there's a new documentary giving us a rare look at his life from the people who know him best. King Charles, the boy who walked alone, it's called, from See It Now Studios, is available Right this moment on Paramount Plus, it features exclusive interviews with schoolmates and royal staff and never before seen photos and stories. <clears throat> In this preview, a friend of Camilla, the queen consort, discusses the relationship between young Charles and his mother, the late Queen Elizabeth. Take a look. His parents were away such a lot because the, the queen became queen very young. And as a result, she missed Charles's childhood. And there's that story he often told about his mother coming back from a very, very long tour, and he rushes onto the royal yacht to greet her, hoping for a hug, and she just holds up her hand to be shaken. To shake her son's hand. That's not... CBS News royal contributor Amanda Foreman joins us now. Amanda, thank you very much for being here. That's tough to hear, right? That's it a is. hard anecdote. And then you also learn in this documentary that he was bullied at school. How did the relationship with his mother, uh, the, the late queen, and the, the bullying shape him into who he is today? Well, you can see that by the essential loneliness of this man, who is, you know, he's two things at once. He's, he's actually always had amazing charisma. And yet that charisma, is linked to a sense of complete isolation. No one, no one knows what it's like to walk in his shoes. And that, and that, and that, and that comes out, I think, in, in his public appearances as well. It was also interesting to see that he was clearly catnip to women back in the day. Mm -hmm. You know, most people have only known him as we see him now, King uh, Prince Charles, King Charles, very official. But back in the day, he certainly had uh, options when it comes to ladies. I was fascinated by the women that, who had spent time with him, talked to him. Um, it, in was, some, it appeared to be very intimate settings that they were still, all these years later, guys, giggly. Yeah. They were still giggly still about it. Still charmed. Yes. How do, you, how do you explain that? What can you tell us about that part of his life? Yes, because it's very hard to imagine your grandpa <laughs> as, as you say, catnip. <laughs> and yet the girls who, who, who went after him were absolutely gorgeous because he has this charisma and it's coupled with this incredible niceness. It's one of the things that comes out in this documentary is just how thoughtful he is to people and how kind and actually rather good about talking about feelings. It also made it clear, though, that he and Camilla had something very special very, very early on that never seemed to wane for either of them. But because she was a divorcee, she wasn't considered um, good enough or proper enough for him. Yeah, which is a shame. I thought so, too. It is a real shame. And it's really hard for us to imagine nowadays that you could actually be separated from the person that you love, who completes you and makes you you, because of tradition. It just makes no sense. And, and yet, yet, these two people should always have been together. We've got to talk about what, what was described in the, in the documentary as a spectacularly dysfunctional family. And that dysfunction is on display with Prince Harry's memoir uh, and this rift in the family. How does King Charles heal the family in the condition it is today? Well, the, the, the healing obviously begins with talking. And if they're not talking, then there's never going to be any healing. Yeah. And behind the scenes, there have been attempts at not just kind of you know, informal talks, but with, with mental health professionals. Because, you know, when it gets this bad and it's this toxic, you need outside mediators to bring people together. So you say that this coronation of King Charles is an opportunity to reinvent himself. Um, why, why would you say it? Well, what, what King Charles has always had is actually very forward-thinking views. This is a man who, in 1974, was talking about diversity, inclusion, envi the environment, organic farming, recycling, and everyone dismissed him as a crank. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it's not that he needs to change what he thinks or what he believes in, but he does need to adapt. For example, I think that he should become friends with Ryan Reynolds and support, you know, Wrexham. That, uh, that would... Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that would yeah. kind of make him more in touch with, you know, how people are feeling today. And shift the narrative. Yeah, just shift the narrative. How people perceive him. Yeah. I, I think we might put that in what to watch if, uh, <laughs> if that happens. Let's see if they become friends. Amanda Foreman, thank you very much. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, the documentary King Charles, The Boy Who Walked Alone is available now on Paramount Plus, which is part of the same company as CBS, we are proud to say.